So what are some, I'm going to give you guys about a one or two minutes to just post some topics that you want me to talk about tonight. One of the topics that I'm going to talk about tonight is my ultimate disappointment, my ultimate disappointment with uh, Chasing the Cup Season 2. If you have watched Chasing the Cup Season 2 and you're in this chat, please press uh, 1. If you haven't seen it, press 2. And be honest, don't troll. If you have no idea what the hell it is, press 3. For all other callers, please hold. Oh shit. Oh, oh, I thought saying two was going to hit. Wow, a lot of threes. Oh, I've seen the first three. Yeah, five episodes have been released. So Ch Chasing the Cup Season 2 is to document the, the season's top players. And uh, here, let me show you guys a trailer in a second. For those of you who have not seen the trailer, let me just show you the trailer for a second. What's this guy doing? Here, I'll show you the trailer. Let me pull it up real quick. Doctor Fate wins. Right. Um, I, fun fact: Chasing the Cup season one is the highest, largest viewed esports broadcast on national TV. Not in Justice series, not in Justice Two Pro series, which was a bomb on TV for ESPN Two. Uh, not. Evo on the Disney Channel or a Street Fighter Five or not Evo on uh, on ESPN, ESPN Two, any of that stuff. Um, long time, wait, fate. shit, where is it? You should not have There's a chat. Look at that. Um, Begin. But the largest was Chasing the Cup on CW Network. I think it was February fifth, twenty fifteen. It documented ESL season two. Had me, Perfect Legend, Honey Bee, um, Honey Bee, uh, Sonic Fox. Uh, who else? I'm forgetting somebody. Fast. What? Man. Mother, that was that was a terrible round by me. Told you I was fast. <laughs> I are you saying three? This guy has any idea what to do there? The infinite? <laughs> cut down the audio even more? Alright. Alright. There. The audio is like super cut down now. <laughs> that comboed. That's funny. Oops. He quit. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, much better. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, Chase the Cup Season 1 was the largest viewed esports program on national TV. Uh, it was on CW Network February, February 5th, I think, uh, 2015. And it did 800,000 views. That's huge with no star power, like no actors, no actresses. That's huge. In retrospect, um, while I'm talking, I will, s I will get the graphic to show you guys. Uh, what the comparisons look like. So anyway, season two of Chasing the Cup came out recently. Um, I was I was a part of it minimally because I only you know I, I stopped competing, stopped playing, and I only went to I only went to Combo Breaker and Evo. I think that's it. I think I just went to Combo Breaker and Evo. But uh, let me email this to myself so I can show you guys this graphic so you guys can have some uh, information about viewership and esports. And this is a 2017 graphic. So this will actually be kind of fun to look at because it's, you know, all current stuff. And it covers all eSport events, not just like fighting games or NRS. It also is a good precursor to uh, what, what is to be expected of EVO. Um, not EVO, uh, E-League. It's supposed to be, to be expected of E-League. 
because it shows the, uh, the viewership for E-League recently. All right, let's put this over here. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm coming. Get this loaded. Don't you guys love how I don't plan really well for any of these streams? It's pretty cool. So that's kind of small. Um, hmm. I can make that better. Yeah, let me make that better. Because you guys are probably watching on mobile devices and uh, laptops. Here, don't adjust your screen. Give me one second. I'm going to make this better. One second. I got it. Watch this. This is going to be weird, but it's going to work. Uh, okay. Okay. Give me a second. That's ugly. All right, scratch that. Oh, no, scratch. Uh, that's okay. That's ugly. It's like I'm, I'm stretching it too much. Why is that just a bad resolution? Um, yeah, that looks like shit. But anyway, um, you can see up here 200,000. That says Fight for the Crown E-League. This is Street Fighter Finals, 183,000 on TBS E-League. God, the, I need glasses to read this shit. I've never needed glasses. E-League Street Fighter V playoff announcement, 177,000. E-League CSGO preview show. God, I got 100, what's that, 33,000, 122,000. So as you can see, the dip-off after this gets pretty strong. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Actually, that, that's 18 to 49. That's 18 to 49. I'm sorry. Uh, Fight for the Crown is 378, 335. Then it goes 331, 330, 295. 291. So Street Fighter was flirting in that 330, 290 range. That's pretty good. Um, I know a couple of buddies. Now people are saying my voice is low. Damn it. This is annoying. Hold on. Here, I'll even let you guys watch. Uh, okay. Tell me if that's tell me if that's better or if it's too loud. Okay, it should be it should be much better. All right. So anyway, um, I'm very curious of what C uh, so chasing the cup season two comes on the seat way too loud now. All right. What? Okay, let's try that. Okay. So, um, tell me if that's better before I start talking again. Supergirl. Dr. Fate. And you're good. Okay. So, Chasing the Cup Season 2 premieres this Tuesday night, October 3rd, on the CW Network. Let me tell you what honestly troubles me. When we were on Chasing the Cup Season 1, Begin. we were interviewed by New York Times, uh, Time Magazine, ESPN... Yahoo.com, movies, uh, not movies like Yahoo, but esports.yahoo.com, the Washington Post, um, you know, all the all these like really well-known publications and websites. Uh, I, I know I'm forgetting a couple of of websites that are places that we were interviewed by. And the other day, I was like, you know, I'm not like, I'm not like really following like the Chase in the Cup season two stuff because I mean, I just don't care as much this year. Oh, shit, I'm not paying attention at all. Ignore the bad gameplay, guys. I'm not really caring about the games. But um, but I was curious. I was like, I wonder if, if any of this stuff is being marketed well or advertised well. Because I haven't seen shit on, like, any TV station. But for Season 1, I always saw stuff. Uh, I Googled it, and all I found was Season 1 Chasing the Cup articles. Season 1 interviews with me, Carl, Perfect Legend, uh, Sonic Fox, Bio, all, all of us, and, like, the producers and... You know, executive producers from um, season one. And the only thing that I found on season two was a fucking Event Hubs article. So, like, n number one, I, I think season two is being very poorly marketed, ver very advertised. That's that's my number one gripe. Number one gripe. Um... I don't know what you guys think about that. Have any of you guys seen any marketing or any advertising for this stuff? Anything at all? Especially for you people who watch the CW shows. That's important to me. Because I honestly don't watch CW like that much. But the few that my wife is watching it or stuff like that. Um, 
you know, I, I haven't seen anything. You know, and I always had people like post on Twitter, oh, yo, cool, man, I just saw this commercial on CW Network. I haven't seen any of that crap this time. It's crazy. Man. Whoa. Dust Sculptor, man, what's up? Peter, one of my good friends. Peter's one of those guys you meet in the scene that makes you happy you're in the scene. Um, sorry, I'm trying to play, pay attention and play at the same time. So, what I'm getting at, can everybody in my chat right now tell me, and for you YouTube viewers, I'll just recap what people say. Can you guys tell me when you guys heard about the ESPN2 and Justice 2 Pro Finals on ESPN2? Like, when did you guys... Like, it was on Sunday, September 17th. Can you guys tell me if you did? And if you did, when and, like, where did you hear ESPN2? Did, like, like, please tell me. Oh, shit. Because I'm... It's okay if, if I'm wrong and I just missed the... Oops. And I just missed it, but... I did. Somebody who follows sports and watches ESPN constantly, like myself. I mean, hell, I work for ESPN like half the time. I'm doing these sport gigs. Yeah, you know, I'm very connected. I know a lot of people in Bristol and a couple of people in LA area. Um, and I'm obviously I know every single one of you in my chat. Most of you, I know all the players. Everything going on with IPS. Everything going on. I follow the scene like no other. On, on all fronts, sports and everything. I didn't hear about it till the day of at work at 9 a.m. I'm like, what the hell is on ESPN2? That's awesome, but this is stupid. Why am I just now hearing about it? So you combine that with the Chase in the Cup Season 2 marketing promotion fails. You combine that with the ESPN2 and Justice 2 Pro fails. And then they wait till three weeks before the last chance qualifier to finally give us some tactical information about when, where, location, what the what the setup is, when you can register. I mean, listen, I'm not doing, I'm not in this community, or, I, well, I'm not doing these podcasts or these real talks because I'm trying to make friends, but somebody needs to have some fucking nuts to bring this stuff up. Like, who the fuck is not doing their job at NRS or WB Games? Like, who in the fuck is responsible for this? Like, marketing the day of, or the day before, because every one of you in my chat right now, just so you guys on YouTube, uh, you guys can watch the um, the replay of this and see the chat for yourself, but every one of you saying, like, the day of, I found it on your Twitter, I found it on Test Your Might's Twitter, the day of, the day before. But, I mean, so, do people, do they, do people really care about marketing this game and actually advertising the esports side of it? I mean, we should be finding out things day of. I mean, we shouldn't be finding out three weeks information for last chance qualifiers. You know, I don't know if people realize, but, you know, like Foxy Grandpa, he's going to be he's gonna be doing the last chance qualifier. He needs to do it to be on E-League. International flights two to three weeks out? Get the fuck out of here. That's way too much. Way too much money. So I heavily, I heavily, heavily question. I heavily, heavily question if anyone. It, you know, my, my gut feeling says too many cooks in the kitchen. Way too many cooks in the kitchen. And that's why it was as bad as it was. And that's why it's still as bad as it was. And nobody wants to take the blame because there's too many cooks in the kitchen so they can just probably pass blame. Or maybe the cooks in the kitchen just won't step up and be leaders and just take take everything by... I, I don't know. It's a very complicated thing I'm talking about. It's a very complicated world to of what I'm asking. But everyone else is doing it. I saw advertisements for Evo... Uh, Street Fighter on the Disney Channel and on ESPN on the, when they were relative years when they were both on e each of the channels. So, um, hey, Brant, what is AMA? And AMA is Ask Me Anything. And that really goes for 99.9%. .9%. You can basically ask me 99.9% .9 anything, and I'll probably, whether it's gaming, personal, family, job, whatever, as long as I feel like Look it's not... Me too intrusive, although it's very hard to be too intrusive with me because I'm super open about everything. Um, I always found that being open is the better thing. And Sure, there's going to be like maybe three people in this chat that take information and run with it and like, oh, you know, look what I found out about Pig. I don't care. Do not care. Um, so, I don't know. It really bothers me. I'm, and I'm not trying to, I don't want this to bother me. I don't want this to be an issue. But, I mean, like for players like Foxy, it sucks. I mean, so, I don't know. And then you combine it with, with they're like the only esports title that doesn't advertise their stuff in the game. Oops, that's a good mix-up. 
you know, like, I, I really appreciate all you guys. Ever since I made my last video, all you guys have been tagging me when uh, SCR happened last week. You guys were tagging me that uh, Street Fighter V was advertising it. Uh, Street Fighter Five was advertising in the game. They're like, "Look, Pig, uh, Street Fighter or Capcom guys must be listening to you." I don't know if they just started doing that. That'd be kind of funny if they did. But um, so yeah, uh, Capcom Cup was, uh, you know, it was featured on uh, the game, the game and stuff. Oops, he's gonna do the knee. Oh, hey, Matt Damon, how are you? Teleport. Oh no, too early. I'm too fast. Make him waste the bar. He don't have a bar. I want to get Crimson on here, because I don't want to sound like the only... I feel like I'm an asshole. All right, and let me say something real quick. Now, press one press one in the chat if you're ready for me to get really real. Don't post ones on my YouTube. Oh, that'd be kind of funny if you did. Oh, I thought that would well, work. I'm about to get real about something. I have to get out of this game to get real. No, I don't. I, I just have to get him in a combo. All right. You guys know why this scene is so stale? This scene is so stale compared to Injustice 1 and Mortal Kombat 9. Think about the rivalries that we had. They were legitimate. Think about the, the shit talking we did. Think about like the think about all the tech videos that, like Maxter and 16-bit would put out and you know the the, the the forums and the information and I would put out the streams, the events, all of us would organize. In MK9 and in Justice One, all of the top you could take the top ten players, maybe top twenty players, and honestly about seventy five percent of those guys were a part of everything I just described. They were making tech videos, they were making substance posts, they were helping the community, they were building the community, they were inviting people in, they were getting people into tournaments, they were making streams, they were making events. They were they were doing everything. They were doing locals, they were doing podcasts. We had maybe four or five different podcasts going at one time. And you know what? It was consistent for a really long time. It was the top players actually being leaders in the scene. Right now, the top players in the scene are not doing a fucking thing. They are not doing one fucking thing. All the personalities in the scene are gone. And I hate to say that. Well, you know, there are some personalities in the scene. You know, you could say all the personalities in the scene are gone. Well, I'll say some good personalities. Uh, some of the good personalities in the scene are gone. And there are still go other good personalities. Personalities that could do what I'm talking about. But the point is, uh, they're not. Like, no one in the scene is doing anything. I why, is it, why did I drop that combo? No one in the scene is doing anything I'm talking about. Now, the question is, are they not doing it because they don't feel like they can? They don't know how? It's not in their DNA? The, are, it's not their focus because they're just focusing on the tournaments and the money? Because now, but you know, back then we weren't, I mean, fuck, dude. I wish I had the money. That I, mean, I wish we were competing for the money back then when I had, <laughs> what, 18 top eights in a row and they're mostly all top threes? You know, I only lost to Cabal. Oops. That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. I was going to go for it. Anyway, I would say the only person consistently putting out video, streaming, um, keeping people in the scene, probably Rio. Like Scar? Scar streams? But, you know, Scar doesn't do any of that other stuff. And I'm not saying if you're a top player, you have to do that. I'm just telling you the, the honest difference of what the top players back in the earlier games were doing versus what the top players now. The top players now, they're just basically playing with themselves and, you know, their friends and the other top players, which I would do, honestly, because that's what counts. And they're just focusing on the upcoming tournaments, and they're not building the scene. And you've got none of the, the upper mid guys and the middle guys, you know, Feeling that void. There's none of that. It's true. <clears throat> uh, some people, someone said Shujinki Dink is doing some stuff. I mean, uh, I don't really follow all of his stuff, but Shujinki Dink is one of those people that's from the MK9 and Justice One community. He's been around. Uh, I mean, he's been around since as long as I have with the 3D MKs and stuff. And there's a lot of history there. So. 
So what I'm saying is I agree with you. Shijiki is one of those guys. But the thing is, I don't, I don't think many people listen or follow his channel. Like, like I don't really keep up on his content. And I feel bad saying that, but it's, it's true. But we used to have character guides. We had, used to have strategy guides, anti-air guides. I mean, people would, like, literally put in tons of time on YouTube and text and uh, on the forums and make all this stuff. And none of the top players do that now. None of the top players are contributing anything to the scene. They're just reaping the benefits. But... Only the top three people are, in my honest opinion, reaping the benefits. This all started with Mortal Kombat X. I'm not going to pick on Yomi too much, but Yomi's a good example. Where they had like 10 or 12 or 13 top players in the building, and I don't think like one thing came about it. You know, like as far as like, you know, community building and, uh, you know, tech stuff and, you know, like helping the community. I don't think anything happened. I don't think any of that happened. Where it was like, it was like the best talent pool you could possibly imagine in one roof and like no content was created <laughs> it's weird Ooh. damn oh you know one thing Yomi did do Yomi used to stream Yomi streams were actually really entertaining really awesome I will say that Yo I take I take some of that back because the Yomi streams were actually pretty awesome, um, and I would I would actually say those streams got some people into the game. Oh, oh, I was trying. To, I don't know if you can stuff that. I think it's. <laughs> That's alright. What's that? Uh. <laughs> no, yeah, Yummy Strings are really good, actually. Oh, I, I thought he <laughs> thought he kicked into my puddle. And I was gonna win that off the. Oh my god! There's no way he wins that, is it? No. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so anyway, another thing that I, a, a lot of people have been talking about is the feature of the sirens, the sirens on Chasing the Cup Season 2. A large focus of Season 2 is about Slayer, his journey, uh, trying to make it in the top eight, get on E-League, win IPS, win EVO, all the good stuff. Uh, it's Michelangelo kind of, um, helping him along, and when he has down days, Michelangelo helps him, um. KP talks a lot about he is responsible for making the scene and building the scene and being a big, the character is garbage being a large voice in the scene that's kind of his role in the thing uh, and then he has some commentary stuff as well uh, but then there's a focus on the sirens the sirens is is a uh, Lumia and Ad Solo and I'm I'm gonna for, and, uh, if Infinity and I hated that I started naming their name uh, SMG Princess because now I'm gonna leave somebody out and feel bad later. Um, I know that they're in the sirens also, uh, Sherry from France and, um, their whole goal, I think Lumia created the group called sirens. Their whole goal is to bring awareness to other female gamers that it's okay to be a female gamer and attend tournaments. Like you don't have to feel like it's a male only thing. You have to be, if you're not a man, you can't attend these tournaments or, or you're going to feel out of place or whatever. Um, so when it came out. A lot of people, a lot of people took a lot of things the wrong way. Like they were promoting, it, it was almost, they, they were promoting these group of girls to fight sexism, but a lot of sexism came out of it. Uh, a large part of it is probably the way that, it, that covering their piece was handled. Like for example, they introduced this group of girls, but they only talked to Lumia. They don't talk to anybody else. They don't talk to Infinity, Ad Solo, or anybody. They just focus on Lumia. And that's not a bad thing. Lumia is great. She's a cool person, one of the coolest people I've met in this community. Uh, but they should have focused on the entire group. Plus, like, they make it, like, this big thing in episode one. And the only, the sirens are only in for, out of five episodes for, like, I don't know, a minute. And then they got most of their names wrong. The the female players in the sirens, they got a lot of their names wrong. They actually said, they actually said Samij is a Superman player. And they actually said Honeybee had to, what was it? Honeybee had to fight, he fought one match, and then he had to immediately go fight King and then after he beat King, 
he immediately had to play for top eight against Gross. So they completely acted like I didn't exist. Uh, they completely acted like Star Charger didn't exist because it's not, you know, it's not like Star Charger and I came close to beating Honeybee. I mean, we did. I actually, I was 10% from beating Honeybee. A lot of people don't even know that. And if you watch Chasing the Cup, you sure as hell aren't going to know it. It's a lot of inaccuracies. And then they had another inaccuracy where it was, they said Infinity, Infinity is playing Forever King in a top 16 match. Like, and then it shows the footage of the game, and it literally at the bottom of the screen says round one pulls. So, I don't, they probably didn't do that on purpose, but it was almost like they were trying to push this narrative, like a false information on a wide mainstream level that a lot of people wouldn't even know it's not factual information about the sirens. And a lot of people, a lot of people got very upset about that, and that added to the, the drama and the conflict. But, you know, I talked to, uh, you know, I had like a, a group text with uh, Lumias, uh, SMG, Solo, everybody, Infinity, and we kind of hashed out like everything. We kind of started from the ground up and we said, you know, what's everyone complaining about? And um, I'll read you some of my responses. I don't feel comfortable reading other, their responses because I haven't asked any of their permission. But let's see. Uh, yeah, actually, SMG Princess hit me up first. Uh, just summary of what she said. I don't think she'll get upset. I can sh I share this. She was like, hey, you know, you want to stream us ladies in Discord chat? Uh, talk about this issue the community has about the Sirens, a female gamer group, being featured in a TV broadcast. And, you know, some people didn't like that a group of girls that haven't placed top 32, top 16, top 8, you know, in the game are featured and taking up airtime when players like Dragon wasn't really talked to or bio wasn't really talked to and all and, you know madzen and foxy weren't really a part of it and, or tekken master so some people became weird about that but you know throughout this chat lumia put pointed out a good point she's a streamer smg's a streamer they've been streaming for about two three years and that's a big part of the scene that's a big part of what i was talking about in my earlier topic that a lot of people don't do so you at least have two of them doing that and affinity she's kind of like that player side on the siren if you would t if you isolate each one of their roles almost. They probably have multiple roles, but their focus. Infinities would be a player. I think she did get top eight once with Melina at a, um, a CEO event, like one of those mid-summer CEO events. <clears throat> but um, or, I don't think it was CEO, but I think it was just like one of those, uh, you know, CEO hosts like four or five events a year. She plays well. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I respond to SMG Princess and I told everybody was, hey, you know, Go ahead and add everyone in here tomorrow night. We can do this. Uh, this is so overblown. It's super annoying. All my complaints are CTC related. Uh, I said, Lumi and Amanda are two of the coolest people I know. I barely know that, know you or the others, but you guys seem cool and you have a place in the community and you do your own thing and you kind of add to the whole, what is the word community? Um, and I, I go on and say, you know, I pr promoted Infinity on Red Hot Sundays because I think it was so badass that she was, you know, a female gamer that was making waves with Melina in Mortal Kombat X and she was kicking ass with Catwoman. You know, I was hearing down on the low. And then, um, what else did I ask? Yeah, so this is what I brought up. And I, I want to get your, your thoughts on this, everybody. I said the only thing I agreed with, because because they made it out, they, they were upset with me because of things that I agreed with in the test you might thread about this topic. And what I said about it was, the only thing I agreed with were groups separated by gender race or age shouldn't be divided into subgroups we're all people we all play and love the game and all are part of the community that's the only thing i agree with uh, i said and then i went on to say i made a joke i said imagine a group of asian man uh, an asian men being featured that'd be kind of weird don't you think like imagine watching chasing the cup season three and they're like a group of asian men did not think that they could compete in tournaments until now and now they come as one. You know, it's like, and they make this whole thing about these, like, bunch of Asian men. I mean, everyone in this chat that I know has been to a tournament, we've been going to tournaments for five or six years. We, we, we've been doing this. We've been doing this, and there's been women there. There's been Asian. There's been black people, white people. There's been from people from India, from Europe, from uh, Bahrain. I mean, uh, Canada, I guess we'll count those guys, too. <laughs> uh, Mexico, Puerto Rico. I mean, there's play, people from everywhere. Russia. Nobody that I know, like, like just, you know, we, I don't know anybody who separates any of those people I just said. We just, we're just all people. We're all there for the same thing. I don't get it. And I do think that the way that segment was produced on Chasing the Cup, it wasn't done in the best light. And I think that they almost did what they were trying not to do. I mean, like, it's like they, they separated them. 
And it's like, why did you do that? Like, why don't you just focus them on as players and talk about how they got into the scene? And you can mention that, um, see, that was my big thing. It was like, yeah, just, just mention that, you know, you're a female gamer and you're definitely in the minority because there's not that many. I mean, we all know. Um, but, but, you know, I'm here and I want to let everyone know it's cool. Like, if you're a female gamer, you want to compete, come out. And that's all you really have to do. They made it seem like it was like a, like a women lives matter or something, you know, which is kind of odd. And like, and the way I, I, I come from the world where it, it doesn't matter if you, your age, your gender, your race, your, your, if you're transgender, I mean, it just doesn't matter. Like you literally are just people there. You're obviously there for the same reason. So just treat it as one. I, I, I don't get what the hell they were trying to do. Like I was, I just, I don't know. It, it, it was, seemed like complete bullshit. Um, I didn't like the direction that they took. I thought they could have did a better job handling it. And I think that's what caused a lot of the, uh, you know, the issues with it. I can't really think of anything that, um, oh, I do want to point something out. I know I'm talking about it. Here, let me see if any of them have responded. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, uh, Lumi is at work. Uh, SMG is super busy. Either one works for me. Okay, sorry. So it doesn't look like they can come tonight, but, let, but that's okay. I'll just archive it and they can let... I do want to make something known. They did not really want me to talk about this without them. They honestly did not want me to... I, I guess I did, but they did not want me to start talking about this without them. Because... It, it's, it's, you know, as Lumia put it, she's like, it's not like we need uh, a man to fix this for us. You know, we can handle ourselves. We want to come on there and represent ourselves. We want to explain to everybody for ourselves. I'm the only reason I'm bringing it up right now is because a lot of people have been talking to me about it on Twitter and I've seen the test your might thread go up and the drama ensued and then they closed the thread, which was kind of sad. And it was just like sad. Ugh, it sucks. But um, anyway, I think it's very easy to just point out that it doesn't matter what your gender, age, race, or where you're from or any of your your history or past as long as you're a good person you're a good person and you should be treated that way and that's what it comes down to um but a lot of this was it basically stemmed from just bad writing and bad editing and bad producing and just tons of terrible errors in a production that's gonna air on tv tuesday like please god fix it before you air that shit on tv I'm talking about, you know, the, you know, Infinity is not like one match from top 16 because she ended up getting, I think, 149th place. How do you be in a top? How are you in a top 16th match? Like, it literally takes me five seconds to Google the placement on uh, Smash.gg, and you can see Infinity. She got, I think, it was 149th. Like, how do you narrate that shit? And don't cry. Like, how do you not check your work? 